Pope Francis flexed his diplomatic muscles in May, holding productive meetings with world leaders. But he also kept time for people living at the peripheries. On May 3rd, Pope Francis said Mass at a parish in a poor neighborhood on the outskirts of Rome. He said that Christians must reflect on whether they remain in Jesus or if they have separated from him. Una bella domanda per noi cristiani è questa. Io rimango in Gesù o, o sono lontano da Gesù? Sono unito alla vite che mi dà vita o sono un tralcio morto, che è incapace di dare frutto, di dare testimonianza? A few days later, in one of the most amusing meetings of his pontificate, Pope Francis met the Harlem Globetrotters. Players taught the Pope a few moves, and he did his best to keep up. Between the laughter and joking, one of the players thanked Pope Francis for the work he does every day. He jokingly told him that he could play basketball with the jersey they gave him. At a separate event, Pope Francis said that education, sports, and work were the three ingredients necessary for children to develop full lives and avoid destructive behavior. La Chiesa si interessa di sport perché le sta a cuore l'uomo, tutto l'uomo riconosce che l'attività sportiva incide sulla formazione della persona, sulle relazioni, sulla spiritualità. The Pope received a tennis racket as a gift during the event. On several occasions, Pope Francis has acknowledged that he is a big sports fan, and he especially likes soccer. Later in the month, Pope Francis' schedule was filled with meetings that could have geopolitical consequences. Cuban President Raul Castro visited Pope Francis in the Vatican, and their meeting lasted nearly an hour. Throughout the visit, the Cuban president thanked the Pope for helping ease ties between the U.S. and Cuba, and this is how their conversation concluded. Once he left the Vatican, Castro said this to the press. The leader also said that the Pope had inspired him to consider returning to Catholicism. Later that month, Pope Francis also had a 20-minute private meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. They discussed the recent agreement in which the Vatican officially recognized the Palestinian state. Also covered was the peace process with Israel, the conflicts ravaging the Middle East, and the need to fight terrorism by promoting interfaith dialogue. Abbas received a copy of Evangelii Gaudium and an Angel of Peace medallion from Pope Francis. The Pope added this comment when he gave it to him. The Middle Eastern leader was in town to attend the canonization of the first Palestinian saints. Thousands of people celebrated the four exceptional women at a ceremony in St. Peter's Basilica, while Pope Francis read the formula that declared they were saints. Maria Cristina ab Immaculata Concezione. Those new saints were four nuns, one French, one Italian, and two Palestinian. Maryam Bawardi risked her life for Christianity after she declined when her Turkish boyfriend wanted her to convert to Islam. The other, Maria Alfonsin Daniel Gatas, founded the Sisters of the Holy Rosary, a religious community dedicated to education, including for Muslim girls. Il loro luminoso esempio interpella anche la nostra vita cristiana. Come io sono testimone di Cristo risorto, the other two saints were known for their dedication to the poor and sick and for Eucharistic adoration. That was especially the case of the Italian nun, Maria Cristina Brando. The French nun, Emilie de Villeneuve, died during a cholera epidemic while caring for the sick in a hospital that her congregation created. Although the Synod on the Family didn't take place until October, Pope Francis discussed related issues frequently ahead of the event. 
During a May general audience, the Pope reflected on the challenges of raising children and how hard it is to find balance between affection and authority. He said that some situations are harder than others. Voi siete separati per tante difficoltà e motivo. La vita ha dato, vi ha dato questo, questa prova, ma che i figli non siano quelli che portino il peso di questa separazione. The month closed with an important prayer led by Pope Francis. The Church remembered and prayed for Chinese Catholics on May 24th. Many of them faced persecution and the Chinese government has repeatedly blocked the Vatican from becoming involved with the Church in China. Anche noi chiederemo a Maria di aiutare i cattolici in Cina ad essere sempre testimoni credibili di questo amore misericordioso in mezzo al loro popolo e a vivere spiritualmente uniti alla roccia di Pietro su cui è costruita la Chiesa. There are 12 million Catholics in China, they are divided between the underground church, which is loyal to Rome, and the Chinese patriotic church, which is ruled by Beijing. 